What the Today, we have a rather unique car that we are looking at today. It is called the Zeker 009. This has been one of the most polarizing MPVs we've looked at with people saying it's the most ugly and it's the most beautiful MPV they've ever seen. So we decided to ask a couple people off the street. This is Josh in beautiful and a little rainy Beijing, China, and we are EV now. Hope you enjoy this video. What do you think about the looks of the Zeker 009? <笑>太丑了感觉它这个设计就很很很嗯喂可以你知道贵不贵五十万肯定是贵了一点对于买车人来讲都希望可以再便宜点有一点呃有一点贵反正给我我不会买的 um, <笑> I don't know, I just really enjoy the vibe of it. And then like the shape of the car. And then I feel like it would be really nice for like a family road trip. Mm. Mm. Thank you so much for your thoughts, man. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. The Swiss philosopher and psychologist Carl Jung talked about the concept of an antiadromia. And in this concept, this is when something is so extreme, it can change from one extreme to the other. And of course, in China, there is the concept of Taoism, which Lao Tzu talks about yin and yang. And when something is really, really, really yin, it can easily change to yang. When something is too yang, it can change to yin. And so with this car, is it so ugly? It becomes beautiful, almost like a pug or the VW Beetle, or let's be honest, sometimes babies where they're so ugly, they're absolutely beautiful. We think maybe that's why people think this car is beautiful. There are two things that are unique about the Zeker 009. The first is the exterior design, and the second is the price. Up to this date, this is the most expensive car that Zeker has, starting at 499,000, going up to 588,000 RMB. And with that price, we wonder, is it really worth it? And with all the features that is packed within this, we really found this price to be totally justified. Starting with the pilot chairs on the second row, I just wanna say they are like sitting on clouds and they are a rather ingenious design. You can slide this back and find a bunch of buttons to give you a massage, adjust your chair, put your chair back and forth. Over here, one of the coolest things is there is a desk. If you wanna do some work while you're on the road, you can put this out and put your computer right on top of it. And that is a wonderful little design, although it does say don't do while moving. So I'm not sure how safe it is. So there are actual physical buttons for most of the things that you need to adjust in this, which I really like. Here you can adjust the seat backwards and forwards. And on the outside, when you're getting in and out, you can push the seat all the way forward and all the way back depending on which row you need to enter. When I say the Zeker 09 is packed with features, I really do mean packed. On the door here, there are buttons to adjust the windows, um, adjust the roof, and open and shut the door, as well as a clock here that is really nifty, aside from looking good. You can also adjust the AC and change the directions of the vents via this little touchscreen, which I think was really a good touch. There is a 15.6 inch screen that you can watch videos on. You can adjust the AC. You can even watch the map as you are in route driving. It is really awesome and really convenient. There's also an HDMI that you can hook up to it and a 60 watt USB-C charger that you can plug in a laptop or something like that into. That would be the newer laptops though. This is an absolutely amazing thing and you can even have a meeting on it. There are cameras right here and it is all controlled with this. It is not a touch screen. So please make sure you don't lose this remote, it is important. If you haven't noticed already, I'm kind of a full-size guy. I'm not exactly on the thin side. I fit really comfortably in these seats. I have plenty of room on both sides for being a kind of wider person. That is really awesome. However, these are two full-size seats side by side. So there is absolutely no room to use the middle passageway to get into the back. You have to put the seat all the way forward and kind of scrunch in to reach the third row. 
These buttons allow you to exit the third row. The third row sacrifices a little bit of comfort to give the two pilot seats the focus on premium. And it is two seats back here, not three, but they are cushiony and you have a USB-C charger, a cup holder and adjustable vents. So all in all, not bad. There's a more than adequate amount of trunk space and the back two seats have a surprising range of motion. You can fold them all the way forward and all the way back. Uh, and at the bottom here, there is carpet. So that way you can take it out, clean it. With all of the features that are inside of the cabin, it is absolutely jam packed with things that increase the overall comfort and the experience for the passengers. And I can say, although this price makes it not for everyone, for anyone who can get it, it is definitely worth it. However, there is more to come. The 009 wowed us with all its cabin features, but it's not a car just for VIPs. It is also a car that is absolutely thrilling to drive and surprisingly aggressive. We're talking about a three ton MPV that does zero to 100 kilometers in 4.5 seconds. Now that's achieved with two dual motors that produce a total of 544 horsepower. For a car to be this size and to be this nimble is absolutely amazing. And I can think if you see a pedestrian sees this car being able to move the way it moves, I think that would be absolutely terrifying. Not only does this have a really great pickup, the cornering is nimble. Comparing the BID Denza D9, which is the top selling MPV in China, the driving experience shares almost nothing in common with the 009. For reasons being, this car's steering ratio is way more accurate. The car follows where the wheels are pointed and the dampening is a lot more tighter without compromising the cushion-like ride which is quite comfortable. The acceleration is also much faster. Overall, you feel much more confident when you are driving in this car, taking corners and slowing down. The brakes give a lot of feedback and feel quite heavy. Smooth drive, accurate, nimble, really a pleasant MPV to drive. If I had to describe the driving of the 009 in one word, it would be sporty. And the only thing I would add is surprisingly sporty. Some of the things that we liked and some of the things that we didn't like. The first thing that we really liked and that we really can't stop talking about is the driving experience of this car was absolutely fantastic. Surprisingly sporty and really fun to drive, especially for a three ton MPV. The other thing that we really liked is the overall experience of the cabin. It's packed with features, it's quiet, and the cushiony seats really make it comfortable. The third thing that we liked is of course, the range. With over 700 kilometers of range, it is a very, very, very versatile uh, electric car. And over 700 miles is absolutely fantastic, especially for a car this big. Now, the things that we didn't like is driving this with no HUD, no heads up display. So that means that if you wanna find out where you're going, you need to either look at the map or look down at the entertainment screen behind the steering wheel. Not great, a lot of cars, especially in China, have these already. This car not having it is definitely a downside. The other thing that's not great is the speaker system, especially this price range, the speaker system could be and needs to be better. The other thing that definitely has room for improvement and is the third thing that we did not like was the overall uh, system in the car, um, the infotainment system. It has room for improvement, it's a little slow in places and overall it just could be better. But Overall, we really liked driving the car, and if you liked it, if you think the car is beautiful, if you think it's really ugly, please let us know in the comment section, and don't forget to like and subscribe.